friend of the program, as they would say, joins us right now. It's Kevin Seifert, ESPN national writer. Rick Spielman made the rounds today in the media center. Kevin, any takeaways from his appearances at the various places he stopped? Uh, I wish I had written down what I thought Rick Spielman was going to say because I think it was pretty close to what he ended up saying. Um, you know, and that's all, and that's the truth. All options are open. It's, it, I don't yeah. think I really don't think the Vikings have ruled out internally any possibilities for what they'll do at quarterback. Um, I'm sure they have a list of priorities that we can guess. You know, what's their top priority? Second, third, fourth, but to have ruled anything out or have to made any black and white decisions on anything. I, I really don't think they've done that. So, um, th and that's and the way he expressed it today is probably the best way to do it. And, and that's probably true for a lot of teams and a lot of situations. You come to the combine, you're still gathering information. This, the combine is for teams to come and look at the prospects who are going to be in the draft. But when all the teams are here, other business is being done, right? Yeah, you do. Um, and yeah, I remember thinking back to even covering the Vikings when Denny Green was the coach. And yeah. you would be, uh, uh, say the Vikings had the 20th pick. He said, you'd have to like 20 guys. Yeah. Because right. you don't know who's going to, you know, 19 of them are going to be gone in this draft before we get a chance to pick at 20. And so you have to like 20 guys. And in the case of the Vikings, they have to like multiple quarterbacks because there's multiple teams looking for them and there's going to be competition. And uh, if they don't get the first guy on the list, they're going to have to go to number two and be happy with them. Yeah, and, and really when you look at the situation, uh, you may also be looking for a backup quarterback too, right? Because all three who played games for the Vikings last season are scheduled to be free agents, and we've seen the value of a backup quarterback. Look what the Vikings did, went to the title game. The Eagles won a Super Bowl with one. Yeah, and you could look in this just in the NFC North division. Uh, you know, uh, the Packers lose Aaron Rodgers, and, and Brett Hundley just doesn't right. get it done for them. Right. Um, you know, and so that you and the way the Vikings depth chart is right now with one guy who spent a year on the practice squad is the only guy under contract that you're right. They absolutely have to sign or and or draft or both two quarterbacks and who knows how it'll shake out uh, depth chart wise but um, they need to it, it's and it's in, it's weird to to go through a season as successful as they are and to in some ways be starting over at that position but that's where they are and they need to be aggressive on multiple fronts let's talk about a different position on offense running back so the vikings obviously lose dalvin cook but before he was lost Things look really good for him. So he comes back, he should be good to go. Then you have McKinnon, scheduled to be a free agent, and then Murray, who was signed as a free agent last offseason. So stream your consciousness for us on the running back position and what you think it's going to look like for 2018. I like that. Stream your consciousness as yeah. a verb. That's, yeah. that's excellent. I like Thank that. Um, I, uh, you know, Dalvin, the, the good thing about the Dalvin Cook injuries, it happened so early that, gosh, I would imagine he'd be ready even before training camp starts, you know, yeah. just on terms of the typical ACL recovery um, uh, schedule. So that that's a, that's the good news of a bad news situation mm -hmm. is that if it's going to happen, you know, you'd want to have the maximum amount of time. And he was already looking, you know, s to start jogging, I think, before, uh, you know, when, when the season was over and we saw him in the locker room. So I think, you know, unless there's some kind of um, setback or complication that, you know, the, the, the idea, and he, he was never like a, I mean, even though he was, he's fast, he's never like reliant on speed in order to, um, to, to make plays, so to think that even if he loses a little bit of speed off the ACL, he's not going to be effective is wrong. Yeah, he's still going to be a top flight running back, and they'll have to make a decision on Latavius uh, Murray given the option and the salary that he has um, moving forward, and if they feel confident about uh, Dalvin Cook, do they want to pay Latavius Murray? I think right. it's $5 million plus to, to be a backup or to, to share at, at best or to be the starter until Cook is totally ready. And so, uh, and that leaves Jarek McKinnon, who I think like really turned a corner career-wise last year, was just so much better in open space and making moves and running confidently and with power. And, and I think he showed that he can be more than just a third down guy, and he probably wants to pursue that. So I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to see what's uh, available to him Veteran running backs don't often get paid um, in the NFL and free agency, but he is the sort of the modern running back that can catch yeah. and even throw, as we've seen, and run the run the wildcat, whatever, um, to fit the type of versatility that a lot of schemes want now. Maybe that maybe John DeFilippo will want that in his offense. I don't know, um, but I would if I were if I were Jerick McKinnon, I would go out and see what someone's willing to pay me first. Yeah, I mean, you, then you look at the Saints, what they do with their running backs, the Patriots, the Eagles. I mean, it's a, still a valued position in the NFL, not valued where you give one guy a bunch of money, but you have two or three guys that you like, right? So. And, and the draft is a place where you could, you know, but, you know I know a lot of teams are going to be targeting the, the versatile type running backs who can catch yep. and, 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 and run, but that's a place where you can find a replacement for a Jarek McKinnon as well. Yeah. Last thing, this may be more of an NFL owners meeting 
topic for us to uh, to hit when we're there. But anything sparking your interest with the competition committee or rules changes, anything that you're kind of keeping your eye on right now? Yeah, and actually here at the Combine, the competition committee uh, meets, and I uh, was there yesterday when they, at the end of their meeting, and I think it's pretty clear they're going to they're gonna change the catch rule. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's going to be a dramatic, like, rewriting of the whole rule book or anything, but uh, they're, they've, they're pretty much at a consensus now that they don't want to see – plays like the Calvin Johnson play, plays like the Des Bryant play um, in the, against the Packers a few years ago, you know, even the Jesse James play from the Steelers. They don't want to see those what look like obvious catches where a guy has uh, control of the ball and he has two feet down and then loses it after he falls down. They don't want to see those being complete anymore. Right. So they're at consensus. We all, I think, would like to see that not be the case. Um, the tricky part now will be to decide how do you write that into a rule while preserving all the rest of the of the, the catch and it's complicated and you know I don't know exactly how it's going to come out my opinion is even since they've now just boxed themselves into a situation where they ha they've basically saying they have to change it if they can get through it without making it worse I think that's the best case scenario because they're uh, they've been looking at this for years after the Calvin Johnson it was 2010 that's a long time ago they've been looking at this for a long time and now they have the pressure from the commissioner to change it but most of the people who have looked at it have said, well, if we change this, then this is going to happen now. If we, if, we, if we get rid of the going to the ground, uh, we're going to have more fumbles. You know, there's always there's going to be a give and take no matter what. There's no, if there were a perfect change, they would have done it you know, a long time ago. So that is going to drive a lot of the offseason discussion, at least through this month and probably during the season as well. Yeah, I mean, that won't be solved here, but it came up here because, as you said, the committee met here. That's going to come up at the owners' meetings along with a bunch of other stuff that will be fun to talk about. Absolutely. That's why the, it's a 12-month-a-year league. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your time, man. Yep, yes, sir. All right.